Howdy. I don't even know where to put this. We got movies. And a lot of them. So, uh, I got a lot of movies this month. A lot of it is uh, backlogging uh, into 4K. I wanted to replace some of my Blu-rays with 4Ks because I finally updated to a 4K television after how long. I just got paranoid that it was going to be another like lost format like HD DVD or something. It seems to be staying around and yeah. So I finally got a 4K TV and now I got a ton of 4K stuff, probably about two thirds of all the stuff that I got is 4Ks, a ton of those. I have like a few DVDs, some Blu-rays, some steelbooks, whatever. So I don't know, wanna just get into it? Let's just get into it. What should we start with? What should we start with? Um, let's start with DVDs because most people don't care about DVDs. I only picked up four DVDs because um, they're DVDs. I always like to see the DVDs people get because that typically just means it's a movie that's not on Blu-ray yet. Why do people not like to see that? I don't know. I like to see it. The first one I picked up is called Fierce People. This was an earlier uh, Anton Yelchin film and I hate the cover to this because it's like just Diane Lane and Donald Sutherland but the main character is Anton Yelchin and then like the second main character is Kristen Stewart. So and like it just doesn't make it look like a good movie. It just looks like a bad like romantic comedy or something. Also has a really young Chris Evans with bad hair. This is actually a really good movie that not a lot of people talk about. And Anton Yelchin in this, this is actually one of my favorite performances of his. Um, it's actually really, really dark in a lot of places. And, or if you've seen this movie, you know what I'm talking about. But it gets really dark and there's a lot of great acting. If you like Anton Yelchin, watch, watch this. I'm so good at talking about movies. All right, next up, good old Steve Buscemi, baby. Trees Lounge. This is his, um, he directed, wrote, I think this is just like his movie overall. I haven't seen this in years, but um, I remember really enjoying it. All Tommy wants from life is what everyone else has. A job, a girl, a good time. But the harder he tries, the worse things get. And the more time he spends at Trees Lounge, his Long Island neighbor bar, neighborhood bar, the more involved he gets with the lives of colorful characters he meets there. You could, I guess, check, I've never seen the trailer, but I guess check out the trailer if you're not sure. It's, it's, it's a really vague description, but um, yeah, nobody ever talks about this movie, but I really enjoy it. The other one is Parting Glances. I think this was Steve's first role ever and it's really a pretty boring movie but Steve Buscemi's character is actually um really fun in it he plays like it's it's like about gay life what what year was this made 1986 um like gay life in the 80s talking about AIDS um taking a look at that and I don't know it's interesting in that sense and Steve Buscemi is great some of the storylines are super boring but I would check this out just like if you can find it somewhere this is like really obscure but um, yeah, parting glances. And then the last DVD I got is a really, really, really dark movie that nobody ever talks about. He has Ian Glenn in it from um, uh, Game of Thrones. It also has Aidan Quinn. It's an Irish movie called uh, Song for a Raggy Boy. And it's about the abuses at this um, Irish Catholic school. What year? 1939. Um, Aidan Quinn plays the new teacher at this reform school. And the kids at this reform school go by like numbers instead of names. They're, it's really strict there. Um, you know, it's just like a typical, like what you would think of a Catholic Irish reform school in 1939. But then the deeper um, you kind of dig into it, the more of like the abuses that you see behind the scenes. And this has some insane scenes. Uh, I, I've, I first saw this when I was really young. And I, I remember being like, oh my God, that's... Like I, I was surprised by what they showed here, but um, it's really, it's really, really hard to watch at some points. But it's, I would suggest checking it out. It has some like flashback scenes that are just like they don't need to be there, and they're kind of annoying. If you if you watch this, you'll know what I'm talking about. And then the ending, I wasn't a huge fan of, um, just because of the tone of it. But otherwise, this is a really, really good movie with great performances, especially by the two lead ch child actors. This. <laughs> this kid and this kid. So yeah, great movie there. Check it out. All right, what should we do next? Should we just do 
Standard Amaray. Let's just do Standard Amaray. Let's party. Starting this off with a good uh, acclaimed Oscar winning film. Um, incredible performances, incredible writing, phenomenal film, <laughs> basketball. Listen, I love this movie. So sue me, sue me. I usually, it's funny because I don't even usually like movies, you know, like this in this style. But anything Trey Parker and Matt Stone do, I'll get. I fucking love everything they do. This, Book of Mormon, Team America, even Orgasmo, obviously South Park, but I'm talking about besides South Park. Um, I just, I think they're so funny. And like, it's just like such a, kind of a, obviously like a stupid story and script, but like they just make everything funny. So um, yeah, basketball phenomenal why am i so close to the camera i don't need to be this close to the camera i'm acting like the like i don't know why i'm that close here so why am i so close next one <laughs> and normally i don't love movies like this either con air baby it's con air if you've seen steve buscemi in this speaking of and nick cage honestly fuck it this is a fun movie and um who else is in this uh john cusack john malkovich it's a good time it's just a good time it's insane steve buscemi just plays like the worst person in the world and yeah it's it's fun if you've seen it you've seen it it's it's a nick cage film just go watch con air oh, the next one i love this movie uh this i for some reason i kept thinking that i owned this on blu-ray and then like sometimes i would go to watch it and be like oh i don't own it but then i would just think i had it i don't i don't know but um i finally picked it up for real um, and that's Rob Roy. Honestly, the main reason I love this movie, one of my favorite actors of all time, super underrated in my opinion, Tim Roth gives top, top, will be top five. I'd have to think about it. Top five villain performances. One of them is Tim Roth in this. He's fucking incredible in this movie. So good. He plays like the grimiest piece of shit ever. And um, I think he was nominated for an Oscar. Yeah, he was nominated for an Oscar in this, but um, oh, he should have won in my opinion, but he was so good. But it also has uh, Liam Neeson and Jessica Lange. It's, it's not a masterpiece, but it's fun. And Tim Roth's performance is a masterpiece. I'll say that. So this next one, is a rare blu-ray even the dvd is pretty hard to find but the blu-ray is especially difficult to find because there's only 1000 of them this is number 680. august underground um <laughs> most people just don't watch these movies it's a trilogy it's the august underground trilogy so it's all it's got um august underground it's got mortem and then it's got penance don't watch this move these movies i really like these movies because i think that it's fascinating what they were able to do with practical effects on like a micro budget and um i just i kind of i really dig the way they put this together i thought it was really done well for what they were trying to go for but 99.9999999999999 percent of people this is guys this looks i can't even show you the inside because the inside inside art shows some of the most graphic parts of the movies. Um, these are just snuff films. They're they're not obviously not real snuff films, but they're designed to look like snuff films. And um, I remember seeing this when I was way too young. It was this in Cannibal Holocaust. I saw both of these way too young. And um, I remember they kind of they had an effect on me. So I've always just kind of remembered these movies. Recent, more recently, I've watched a bunch. They have some really cool behind the stuff, scene stuff online, like long, like how they created certain things and interviews and um, seeing those behind the scenes stuff has kind of lessened the shock of it for me because now I'm like, oh, okay, I'm watching this. I'm thinking, oh yeah, this is how they created this. But these are disgusting and extremely realistic and disturbing they're they're just meant to look as close to real they're found they're just designed to like found footage snuff films and um you don't want to watch them promise similar vein um a christmas story <laughs> so i picked up a christmas story this is my number one christmas movie 
this was the Christmas movie I watched growing up. Of course, I watched some other ones, but like this is the Citizen Kane of Christmas movies. All right, for me, this is top tier. Comedy is golden. Storyline is golden. It's a great time. I love this movie. Fudge. It's so good. It's so good. I don't know why I didn't own this on Blu-ray already. It's another one of those things I kept thinking I did and then I didn't. But uh, yeah, I really like the slip cover. It's got like an embossed uh, cover here with slightly embossed um, uh, ornaments and it's shiny and it's got like some good stuff going on here. So I don't know why I'm standing so close again. But um, yeah, this is a top tier Christmas movie. So I picked that up finally. And then the next one I only just recently watched. This has been on my watch list for like a couple years now and I just never got around to it. It's so good and so cathartic and so sad. And Bill Hader is literally a genius. And it's the Skeleton Twins. Kristen Wiig is also fantastic in it, but I just am a huge Bill Hader fan and he's so good in this. It also has um, Luke Wilson and Ty Burrell. It explores relationships, which is one of my favorite things. Sibling relationships on screen or familial relationships on screen. It's one of my favorite things. And uh, they just did it so, so well. Um, Bill Hader and Kristen Wiig. And uh, yeah, if you haven't seen it, what is the, it's only, it's only um, an hour and a half. So it's, if you want just like a good little movie to watch, um, it's not particularly super lighthearted. <laughs> At the beginning of the movie, one of them tries to commit suicide. It's not a spoiler, it just happens first thing. And um, that's what kind of reunites them. They're these twins who haven't spoken in years, like decade. Yeah, one decade. Um, and it explores like their individual relationships and their relationship with each other and some like really dark stuff from their past comes up and some you know conflicts that are happening currently it's just a really good movie so i would check it out <laughs> i just mentioned this i didn't even i wasn't even thinking that i also got this so i didn't own this for a really long time because i just wasn't sure um because it freaked it freaked me out too much when i was younger to watch again and then now i've obviously like i've seen it multiple times since and it's cannibal holocaust if you know realistic war movies this is like the end all be all of cannibal films. It is, I always watch this though with the animal cruelty, because um, there's two options because they actually did um, kill some animals in this movie. And there's two options. You can either watch it as is or without that. So I watch it without that because I can't watch that here. This is the um, front cover. And then what is this? Who released this? Grindhouse. Um, this is a really nice set actually. We've got the um, DVD with the cover I really dig. It's like that classic, you know. It's got like a cool little booklet here. And then it's got the two discs. This is the one of the most famous um, shock films ever. Probably the most famous. Um, got banned in a ton of, ton of places. It's well known for the director having to um, prove in court that he didn't actually kill the actors in the movie. That's how realistic it looked. And then we've also got, I'm going to censor this because yeah, yeah, I don't want to get, um, whatever flagged, but, uh, this is the CD to it, the soundtrack. And to this day, the main theme of this movie is the most haunting thing I've ever heard in my life. And it makes me so uncomfortable, but also like I can't stop listening to it whenever it comes on. And if you've ever seen this movie, especially like I saw this really young, so it like, it has a different effect on me. But um, it it's, if you, if you listen to it without ever seeing the movie and then you see the movie and then listen to it, it's just two completely different things. Um, the main theme to this movie. But uh, yeah, this is actually a really nice release. A lot of people have this one. Most controversial movie ever made, it says. But uh, yeah. That's kind of a classic one. The next two I got are Twilight Time releases. They're actually my first Twilight Time releases that I've gotten. And this one, this first one is an upgrade actually, and one I have literally never heard anybody talk about. And it's Born Free. And this, when is this from? 1966. And this is a movie I grew up on because I, lions have always been my favorite animal. Um, this, Pride, it's why Lion King has always been my favorite Disney movie. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, one that I never hear anybody talk about and it's just kind of, um, uh, about this couple who adopt a lion cub 
I think after I haven't seen this movie in years I really have to watch it again this is why that's why I got it I think I'm gonna watch this again in the next couple of days but um I think the mother was killed so they adopt this um, lion cub and name her Elsa this is the real Elsa I don't know a frozen I only know born free and then they eventually you know what I'm not gonna say anything but it's it's I, I've just always loved this movie grew up with it it's I, I love it um, and then the next one, this is uh, out of print now, I believe. I actually, it's a funny story. All right, first let me just tell you what it is. I don't really hear people talk about this too much uh, at close range. It's a, a, a Sean Penn and Christopher Walken movie. It's also got uh, Chris Penn in it. They, he, they play brothers, actual brothers, obviously. And um, this one is from 1986. But this one is out of print, I believe. And I, it went out of print before I bought it. But I don't know if it got returned or if they had some like that, like stocked an extra one extra copy or something because it went back for sale on the website. And um, so I bought it really quickly and now it's just out of stock again. But um, yeah, this is a great like I have a really good time with this movie. It's it's not the it's not a perfect movie, but it's really interesting. It's 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 a really interesting movie. It's dark. Um, it's kind of about these two brothers, or about mostly Sean Penn, but Chris Penn is his brother, and it's, uh, Christopher Walken plays the estranged father, estranged father, and um, he kind of Sean Penn's character kind of gets back in with his father, um, and kind of becomes romanticized with his life of crime, of Christopher Walken's character's life of crime, and he gets really tangled up in it, and then like horrible things happen. That's all I'm gonna say, but. Really good movie. I would check it out if you haven't. This next one um, is a really recent release. I think it's the um, most recent Arrow release. And um, a lot of people picked this one up. But it's Al Pacino's Cruising. And this, I know this one has a lot of mixed reviews, but I think it's great. I think that it would help to watch it more than once. And for me, it, it took more than once because at first time I was like, eh. But then I also kind of watched the, I didn't even realize this on my first watch. But the way that they use different voices and different actors for each killer, but like it's kind of supposed to be the same one, but then like the one who was the killer is the victim in the next one, but the one who was the victim winds up being the next killer. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about, like the actors. Um, and they kind of do that to prove a point. I don't want to like explain things and spoon feed it, but it's just really interesting the way that they do that. And yeah, I actually, I really enjoyed this. I've never read the book. There, I know that like they took the premise from a book, a novel from Gerald Walker, but I've never read that. But um, it's, it was really controversial um, when it was first released, but I thought it was really well done to a point. There, there was, of course, there were some issues. Al Pacino was fantastic in it, but um, yeah, cruising. Then I picked up some Scream Factory, Shout Factory releases. No, I think just Scream actually. So I picked up um, one that not a lot of people like. I feel like I have fun with this. It's no cannibal holocaust, but I have fun with it. And it's The Green Inferno. It's this kind of, it's, it's obviously Eli Roth. I don't know, if you know it, you know it. It's not some monumental movie by any means. Don't you love that cover though? That's a gorgeous cover, like beautiful. Next is one of my favorite horror remakes of all time. And that is Dawn of the Dead. It's not even like a completely remake, but a lot of people like to, because it shares obviously a lot with the original, but I love this movie. I think it's so well done. I think that for the sheer amount of characters they had in this and for it to be a zombie film, they are able to get you connected to these characters so well. And like they explore each one in depth and like they just do it so well. And I just love that because characters are the main reason I watch movies. I want like good characterization, I want development, the, I want the characters to be explored and it just this just does all of that and it gets you connected to like all of these characters and yeah I love it and Ty, I always I always really liked um, Ty Burrell's performance in this movie I don't know I always dug it but oh my god it, it has what is the one um so the one special feature hold on oh yeah i think it's special report zombie invasion where it's supposed to be like this time lapse of like the news as the country slowly descends into this zombie apocalyptic world and it has some of the worst acting i've ever seen it's so funny um it's just it's terrible but it's so funny to watch but um yeah the movie itself great love it 
pretty much everybody's seen Dawn of the Dead. Don't need to talk about it. The next one I picked up is one I actually didn't watch when the hype was. I knew all about the meme, but I didn't watch during the hype. I only just first watched this a couple months ago, so I had to pick up The Babadook. Um, this is their LGBT... Um, it went to an LGBT cause uh, for this cover. For this cover, it's just the normal thing in the, in the, the normal MRA in the bottom, but this one's limited to 2,500 copies. I got uh, number 1628. So you can see right down there, it's got a little Bubba Duck on the back. I thought this was the funniest meme. Um, a lot of people who get this don't realize that it was. They just like think that it was just coincidentally done for LGBT, you know, a good cause, which is great. But the, I guess for people who don't know, this was actually accidentally at one point filed in Netflix under the LGBTQ category. Um, and people made a meme out of it saying like, He's a queer icon, blah, 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 um, which I don't, it's hard to explain. If you know memes, you know memes. But um, <laughs> so when I saw this, I was like, I have to get this version of it. And I love the movie. When I first, when I saw it, I was like, mm, that's why I know a lot of people didn't love it. It's more of a I loved it. I loved the metaphor. I just loved it. I thought it was super smart and I thought that it was really creepy. I don't know if it was as much of like a horror as people were expecting. It does have a lot of horror elements, but it's more of like a drama and it's 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 an analogy for many different things but um i think it's super it's like intelligently made and it's a great and i love it so those were my scream factory releases and um yeah on to the steel books all right these first two were shout factory releases um they are they've been in the store for a while i think it's because the Blu-ray set has more special features, but I just love the way that these look. And I had these movies on DVD for the longest time and it was like disgusting that I hadn't upgraded yet. So I just finally did. I'm gonna get the box set at some point because I do want those extra features, but I just think these are so like cool looking and being next to each other on the shelf. And it's uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and Bogus Journey. Like, look at those. I don't know, I love them. Um, these are the backs. They're great, just great looking releases. Yeah, there's not much to say about these. Everybody knows these movies, man. Everybody knows them. If you don't, learn them. I'm so excited about, I don't even know though. I wanna say I'm excited for the new one that's being in production right now, where, 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 wherever they're in production. Um, I just am cautiously excited, but I just think it's really cool that they're finally doing another one. And the next one I picked up, was this also Shout? Yeah, this is also a Shout release. This is actually Double Dip. We love this movie so much, um, but I, I just really liked the look of the Steelbook, and that's Fargo. It's the 20th anniversary edition, and um, it's kind of hard to see, but I just had to pick it up. I don't know. Why did I do it? Who knows, but... This is a, such a great movie. Some people say it's a really like too slow. I think it's perfect amount of slow. And Frances McDormand was so good in it. And um, of course, Steve Buscemi's in this also. I don't know why there's so many Steve Buscemi movies in this. So that's like a thing, I guess. And the next one I picked up, oh, I picked both of these up kind of recently at Best Buy. Um, they were in the same steelbook like release bundle. So I picked up um, The Goonies and Beetlejuice. I loved these editions. This is the Goonies one with Goonies uh, Never Say Die on the back. And then got a digital code. No art on the disc, but then it has the map behind it. So that's cool. I just really liked both of these uh, versions as well. So I wanted to pick them up. They're super cheap too. And then we have um, the Beetlejuice one, which is a really cool artwork here. Let me see if it shows better. Like, yeah. Sorry about the glare. There's that, and then similar, it's got the same scene that the art is created in the front, but the actual scene. So yeah, I picked up both of those. And then last, um, I wanted to, I still, I still need to, but I'm trying to just kind of slowly finish my Tarantino movies on Steelbook. I have certain rules for my Steelbooks. Um, I don't get Marvel Steelbooks at this time to save money because I know if I start getting them, I'm going to need to finish it because I have a brain like that. It needs to be finished and I don't want to be like that. So I don't get Marvel movies and I don't like to, I don't really do Disney movies for the most part. Uh, Pixar movies, especially. Um, for same reason, I want to be a completist and waste all of my money. And plus, I really like slipcover versions for those anyway. Those are 
I like, I prefer them and yeah. But anyway, tangent done. I do want to get every Tarantino movie on Steelbook and this is one I hadn't had yet and I just was browsing around Best Buy and just saw this for super cheap. So I just picked it up and it's just Grindhouse with Planet Terror and Death Proof. So yeah, everybody knows this release. I just hadn't owned it and it was just incredibly cheap. So yeah. And then, okay, the next two I got are gorgeous releases from um, Plain Archives. Oh, I love them. So which one should we show first? All right. So I hadn't owned this movie yet. I kept wanting to pick it up, wanting to pick it up. I just didn't for some reason. Um, I really enjoyed it with Margot Robbie and Sebastian Stan. I, Tanya. And it's so beautiful. Okay, I really can't. Oh, okay. That kind of captures it a little better. So if you can't tell, her dress is slightly embossed and has like a sparkly kind of, um, yeah, like a sparkly embossing to it and like the artwork with the ice on the bottom oh so good and then they always have their stickers on the back like on the plastic so I put the sticker on the back here um and then it says she's the ice princess punisher and it's so good this is number um 410 out of 850 and then it also comes with this gorgeous steel book inside really pretty and then it's just this on the inside we've got Margot on there and then um, this is I believe uh, yeah these are movie stills in this little envelope which is cool I'm not gonna take them out but and then it just has a quote from the movie on the back there it also has this booklet a great booklet here with a lot of different uh, Sebastian Stan and his glorious mustache. Yeah, just a really beautiful release. And this is my first time buying from Plain Archives. And I would do it again in a heartbeat because I, I saw that they were beautiful online, but like different on, it's different in person. And just like the colors on this are gorgeous, like this bluish purple, really cool tones, just gorgeous. And then the next one is also a beautiful release of a movie I love, one of my absolute favorite zombie movies of all time, Train to Busan, with the creepiest zombies, oh, when they first appeared on this in this movie. And this also has um, a movie I've never seen, an animated movie from the same director called Soul Station. So that's on the back, but I've never seen it, so I can't really comment on it. But like, let me try to move this back a little bit. It's such a cool release, and this one's also absolutely beautiful can't really this is really not okay sorry that's my ring light oh boy that's that's impossible but um let me show you the inside again it's got train to busan on the front and you can kind of see in the light here it's got this um rough textured hand print which is very cool and then it's got soul station on the back with another hand print there and that's just gorgeous also and then we've got all the discs there's a score. The score is here. Um, I think the Soul Station movie is this one. Train to Busan special features and then the Train to Busan movie. Also got an envelope with some stills. Very different looking from the I, Tanya one, of course. And then we've got the booklet here. And then, of course, again, it says Soul, Soul Station on the back. Wasn't... Oh, I just... I loved um, um, Train to Busan. I'd heard so many good things and I finally decided to watch it and Korea just, they know how to do some things really fucking well. And uh, they definitely did this well. And that's the uh, Plain Archive sticker on the back that matches this one. So, oh, and this is number 373 out of 1000. So, I know they also have like one click box sets, but I really, I didn't, I think one of them sold out anyway, but I don't know. I don't know if this one did. I know I Tanya did, whatever. Both of these absolutely gorgeous i have the worst lighting on the planet so you can't really tell but just so beautiful and i'm so happy i got those some of my favorite pickups of the month for sure i'm gonna go to try to go through these fast because i haven't even started the 4ks and we're already at a lot of time so let's just kind of get through the ones that everybody has heard of also schindler's list a lot of these i've seen or i had on blu-ray but i just wanted to 
upgrade because I have a lot of upgrading to do. So we got Schindler's List and then we've got all three Toy Stories. And obviously I'll be picking up the fourth one as well, which I really enjoyed. All of these movies are great. I love all these movies. Then we've got one of my favorite DC movies, Shazam. Really, really pleasant surprise. I was looking forward to it because of uh, Jack Dylan Grazer from It. But uh, yeah, it just, it, I really loved it. I thought it was a good time. And then next up, I upgraded my copy of Ex Machina. Man, Alicia Vikander. Vikander? I don't know, but... She's so good, and Oscar Isaac, of course, is fantastic. And so is Dom Domino Gleason. So then we've got, I don't know if this needed a 4K release necessarily, but I picked it up anyway. Uh, one I really, really like, enjoyed, um, and that's Wonder. A lot of people know this one, but um, uh, this has a, uh, this was one of the first things I saw. One of my favorite child actors right now, um, Noah Jupe. He's in this, he plays the friend. What's the friend's name? I don't remember, but um really really uh it's really emotionally like manipulative and it's just clearly but it's just it's a fun watch and it's just it's heartwarming okay and it's good and jacob tremley is great as well next up we've got um i upgraded my copy of saving private ryan nothing to say here i think this is my favorite war movie of all time i think the next one we got was sicario i still haven't seen dave soldado but i don't really want to I don't know. I just, I, um, I just, I loved, I love Emily Blunt so much. And like, this movie was so good, but I was, I was just infuriated all the time with how she was treated. And I know that's the point, but like, I just love Emily Blunt so much. Anyway, um, I love this movie. I just am not that interested in the second one. I've heard that it's like good, but I don't know. I just like this as a standalone movie. Next up, I had to pick up, um, an upgraded copy, 35th anniversary, The Karate Kid so good and as much as i um love ralph macho in this he will always be johnny from the outsider i know everybody always sees ralph macho and thinks oh daniel san but no he is johnny for me but still i love this movie everybody loves this movie the next one is one i actually don't see people talk about really ever and even in 4k collections i don't i haven't seen that many people like be like oh this is in my collection which is interesting but um philadelphia I remember this, I don't know if it was out of print or if it, I don't know what was up, but I remember like a long time ago trying to get this on Blu-ray and it was super expensive. So I'm happy it came out on 4K. Not a ton of people talk about this, um, but it's one of my all-time favorite uh, Tom Hanks performances and it's a really beautiful movie and sad as hell. Let me just read the back to you. Tom Hanks and Denzel Washington as two, stars two complete competing lawyers who join forces to sue a prestigious law firm for AIDS discrimination. So... Tom Hanks' character is suffering from AIDS. He doesn't want to tell his employer because he's worried about his employment status and uh, until he gets these lesions and his employer finds out, fires him. And it's this whole legal battle. Denzel's character is really biased and homophobic before he meets Tom Hanks and they slowly kind of... It's such a great character development story and it's a great movie. Check it out for sure. And then we've got... Um, I picked up... I haven't picked up the second... Uh, yeah, the two and three yet, but... How to Train Your Dragon. Love this movie. Who doesn't? Great animation on that one. I would do anything for Toothless. Um, we've got Kick-Ass. Love this movie too. I remember seeing this in theater like a few times and it was just great. Great stuff. Really fun. Um, then this is uh, one of my most recent, obviously, because it just came out, but it's uh, Stand By Me. I'm so happy this got a 4K release. Easily one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, everybody in this is so good. Will Wheaton, River Phoenix, Corey Feldman, we got Kiefer Sutherland, just so many good, incredible performances in this. Possibly my favorite coming of age story of all time, but yeah, great movie. All right, next we've got uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, another big uh, childhood Christmas movie growing up, so I definitely had to pick that one up. This is, yeah, that's the Jim Carrey version. Then I picked up Split. This might be an unpopular opinion, but this is my favorite of the trilogy. If you haven't seen it, I'm not going to say what trilogy it is, but I know a lot of people like the first movie more, but this is my favorite, literally just because of James McAvoy's performance. Unforgettable in this movie, just incredible. And like an actor's dream job, for sure. And then Glass, of course. I like that one, except for the ending. 
And then I picked this one up for super cheap at Target, I want to say. Deepwater Horizon, part of the uh, um, uh, Wahlberg and Peterberg trilogy. Um, I haven't watched this one on 4K yet, but I heard it looks really nice. I actually haven't seen those in Survivor. So I still have to see that. And then I have um, this se uh, second two, or the second and third movie in the Dark Knight trilogy. I still need to pick up Batman Begins, but of course the Dark Knight is just in a league of its own. I really enjoyed the Dark Knight Rises. I know a lot of people don't like it. It has its flaws for sure, but um, I thought it was a very worthy movie. Next up, <clears throat> we've got Apocalypse Now, um, also released in the same batch of Stand By Me with the absolutely gorgeous. The only thing I would change about this release is if it would even just have like a clear slip cover or something because I just don't like when that is just out. I don't know. It just makes me uncomfortable, I guess. But yeah, picked that up. What a, that's just a classic. Next we have, this is, I almost never make blind buys. That's this thing. I almost never make blind buys. And um, this is a blind buy. And I bought it before I saw, um, um, Dragged Across Concrete, and I know everybody was obsessed with Dragged Across Concrete, but I didn't like that movie at all. Not a fan in any way, but I bought this before I watched it, so I'm kind of nervous, because obviously from the same director. Um, Brawl and Cell Block 9, 99, but um, I'm holding out hope that this will just be different and I'll enjoy it. I have never seen Bone Tomahawk, so we'll find out. Next up in this really hard to find um, slip cover, so I'm so happy I got this, is Deadpool. I didn't really want the two set. I really just wanted the movies individually. So I spent a while looking for this cover or the slip cover and I finally found it and I'm really happy. It wasn't too badly priced for how rare it is, but um, yeah, it's that Walmart exclusive. I think this was re released when those like Deadpool like covers for all those other movies were released, but um, so happy I finally found this for a decent price and it's in really good condition, better condition than I thought it was going to be. I got it online, obviously. And then we've got Deadpool 2. I haven't actually seen this all the way through. I've seen maybe half of it, so I really need to finish that. And then we've got just every Avengers movie, like I, I uh, Avengers, Jesus, Marvel movie. Um, I'm just gonna go through these kind of quick. I have almost every single, I got all these this month because um, I didn't have any, because like I said, I didn't really have any 4K. I only had a couple. Um, but now, since I love the MCU, I am just like, I need to get these movies. So we're just going to go through an order. I'm only missing a couple, which you'll see, but we've got Iron Man. Great movie. The Incredible Hulk. I actually like this movie more than a lot of people do. I, I can find some enjoyment in this. I can find some enjoyment in Edward Norton's Hulk. Is it one of the better Marvel movies? No, but I certainly like this better than Iron Man 2. My least favorite, uh, probably my least favorite Marvel movie. Super forgettable and all over the place. Then we've got Thor. Special place in my heart because this was the first uh, Marvel uh, MCU movie I saw in theaters. Captain America the First Avenger, my personal favorite Avenger. So this one has a very special place in my heart. I think a lot of people liked this one. I think I enjoyed it a little bit more than a lot of people just because um, uh, Steve Rogers and Bucky Barnes is my favorite. Um, friendship in the entire MCU. And then we've got, oh, love it. Gotta love the Avengers. Just happy that movie exists in general. Iron Man 3, huge step up from Iron Man 2, possibly my favorite Iron Man movie. I just really liked him being more vulnerable and like having to kind of go to, uh, I, I just, I like that movie a lot. Thor The Dark World, another one that everybody despises. Do I love this movie? No. Do I like it? Not really. Is it acceptable for me? Yes. Um, I can, I can watch it. I don't think it's unwatchable, but it's definitely in the bottom of the MCU for sure. My favorite MCU movie ever, still to this day, uh, The Winter Soldier. Just phenomenal. Sebastian Stan, the love of my life. And not just him, obviously, just the story. I really like how it was a political thriller. I just love the direction they went. It was just so different from the other Marvel movies. And then we've got Age of Ultron. Mm. Civil War, great one. My second favorite Captain America movie. And, uh, yeah, I really love that one with a great um, climactic fight scene between, you know, which three characters. Loved that. Um, then we've got Thor Ragnarok with the super hard to find slip. Um, just take a YTT man. He is an absolute fucking genius. So funny. Um, Black Panther. I love that slip cover. 
really nice like rainbow effect there. Infinity War. Nothing to say about that one. Then we've got uh, Ant-Man and Wasp with the lenticular. And then we've got Endgame with that lovely slip as well. So the only ones that I don't have in the MCU are Guardians 2 and Homecoming and Captain Marvel. Those are the only three that I don't have, so I still need to get those. But yeah, all right. I kind of sped through that last bit a little bit, but I know none of you need Marvel movies explained to you. So um, yeah, so that was my entire haul for this month. Um, a lot of movies. My bank account is hurting a little bit, but that's okay. Um, let me know what you guys think of any of these movies or anything that you, uh, any opinions you have on any releases, what you guys will be picking up. I am so nervous for this coming Tuesday because my bank account is literally gonna, oh my God, I'm so scared. There's so many releases. This is gonna be the apocalypse of 4K releases coming this Tuesday. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Um, subscribe, like, like I said, comment, whatever. Yeah, and I will talk to you guys later.